Hey everyone, in this video I'd like to quickly show you uh, the basic usage of IEC timers in TI Portal, how to call them in your project uh, and maybe how to do something simple as just you know counting up every second. So let's add ourselves a PLC. It could be 1200, can be 1500, it doesn't really matter which one we use for this. Now let's uh, create a new function block, we'll be calling our timers in the function block rather than in the main OB. We'll call it my block. And now we will add ourselves our timer, okay? So we will go with a, a on delay timer, so T-O-N. Uh, let's call it as multi-instance, so the instance is part of our uh, FB instance. Let's define the preset time to be 10 seconds. Um, this could actually be, uh, you know, an input, a static, whatever you want. Now we'll start our timer with an extra signal called at start start timer this is a required you know something needs to start our timer it will be a local static okay so let's see how it works let's call our block in the main ob we'll need to create a, a single instance for for our uh, block and let's now put it in simulation okay so i will open two windows so that i will then be able to um to modify my start timer. Unfortunately, you, you can't just right click modify to one. You need to do it for the um, instance OB, instance DB, sorry. Okay, so that's now uh, loaded start module. Okay, let's go online and let's let's try to start the, the timer. Okay, so we go online also with, and, and check the status of our uh, instance DB. It's, it's false here, modify operand, let's modify it to be true. But nothing happens. The question is why nothing happens. If you do go and read the manual, you will find uh, information saying that for the timer to actually evaluate you know, its status to, to start working, you need to access the Q or ET, so elapsed time outputs of your timer. Something just needs to be linked there. You could be just reading the instance data somewhere else, or you can just add something here you know, at the output of Q or ET. So we'll define start timer at ET as local static. And this should allow our timer to start working. Let's load it again into PLC sim and let's see. Okay, so we now need to go back to instance DB uh, to modify the, yeah, let's start it. And there you go, our timer starts counting uh, from zero to 10 seconds. When it reaches 10 seconds, uh, the output key will then go high. Okay, as you can see here, it just went high for us. Okay, so how can we make it so that, you know, it reaches 10 seconds and restarts uh, and then starts uh, counting again? So to do this, uh, what we'll do, we will actually use the output of our counter. We'll start the counter when the output is low, so that when uh, the queue goes high, it will stop and start again. This way, we should be restarting uh, every time we reach our, our preset time, okay? Um, so yeah, we're using IC timer key, uh, but then we also want to be able be able to start it. Okay, so let's see uh, if this is going to work for us. So we start the timer, and if Q is low, then we'll get uh, in. Let's also change it to to one seconds. Okay. So as you can see now, it reaches one second and then starts again in a loop. That's great. Okay, but. That's very useful. Now I want to do an action you know, every second. Let's uh, actually use a counter. So we go with a count up CTU. What we'll do is every time our counter, our um, timer reaches one second, it should increment the counter by one. So we'll basically be counting number of seconds. We call the CTU again as multi instance. Uh, define the the preset value to be to be ten. Uh, so what we need to do, we need to count up on every time the queue goes high. So if Q is true, then count up, okay? Um, and yeah, I guess we can, we can just see if this works for us. So we would expect it to basically go up every second. Okay, so let's now, uh, we need to flip the start timer. So let's go back to the instance of our data block, instance of our uh, function block. We change it to one, this should start the timer. So the timer starts counting, as you see here, and timer works fine, but nothing happens with the counter. The reason for this can actually be found in the manual, and if you do check the manual, you'll find information saying that um, the data inside the IEC um, timer is updated whenever you 
at the one of three, three things. You check the status of Q, you check the status of ET, or you call the timer. So what is actually happening here? In network one, we first check the status of Q, this update the timer. And if the timer didn't reach yet the, the one second limit, this might be low. So the timer will not get restarted. And then we get to uh, to the counter instance. And then maybe you now it already reached um, one second. So the Q goes high because we, we check Q. So it evaluates again. Q is now high. It might count it. But in most occasions it won't. In most occasions what is going to happen is the timer will reach Q in network one. Uh, the key will be high, it will reset the timer, and then when we reach uh, network 2, the key will already be low, so it will not count up, okay? So, there are two ways we can go about this problem. First thing that we can do is we can just replace the order of our networks, okay? So, we'll move network 1 to be below network 2. The way this is going to work, we will first check, okay, we check Q, so the update gets updated, did we reach Q? If we reach Q, then we add to the timer, and only then, when we already added to the timer, we go down, the Q is still high, okay, because the Q doesn't reset, the Q stays high, so we get to network 2, the Q is still high, and this way, we only then reset the timer, okay? So that's the first way. The second way, we go back to the previous arrangement, but rather than accessing Q directly, we'll have an auxiliary now and start variable to which we'll be writing from Q. So rather than checking Q in different places and updating the timer, we'll do it only once in network one, when we will save the status of Q to an auxiliary um, variable, and then we work on this variable, okay? And this is again going to work perfectly fine. So two solutions, either be careful and keep in mind what's happening, keep in mind the fact that every time you check the queue, the timer will actually evaluate it again, or just save the status to an auxiliary variable rather than using uh, the instance data itself. If you have any questions uh, around timers, just let me know in the comments. Thanks and, and bye.